What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Gas Logic again and today we shall finish our discussion on the Tattvas of planets. We discussed about the Agni Tattva, fiery planets, Jala Tattva and also Vayu, right? And we have Prithvi, the Earth which is remaining. Oh my god, we have not yet discussed about Earth itself. And then we have Ether which is Mercury and Jupiter. All right. And before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just, just look to him and you will directly find him. All right. So let's start. Oh, yes. And if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then please click the thumbs up and also subscribe. <laughs> and if you want a personal consultation from me, then go to my link below, Vedic Renaissance and there in the description you can see the options and you can follow these steps accordingly now first we'll discuss about prithvi tattva prithvi refers to earth and the planet mercury signifies prithvi tattva now what is earth basically earth basically is physical manifestation of whatever we see or whatever we think or whatever we want or desires that is anything which manifests in a quantifiable existential reality in front of us all right like i'm having this mic blue snowball then i'm having the webcam logitech c922 then i'm having this laptop macbook pro then i'm having this mobile nexus 5x it's not an iphone by the way <laughs> and then i have this room this beautiful room then i have the sofa behind me all right these are all referring to physical components which i possess that's the meaning of the word earth anything which is grounded which is physical and the planet mercury signifies all this buddha and we all know who mercury is right mercury signifies all the financial sectors entire finance entire money of this world is controlled by mercury if mercury is not there you will not have finances from tomorrow <laughs> people say mercury is business mercury is this mercury is that no it is not like that mercury is controlling the entire financial sector the entire freaking financial sector is under mercury because without money you cannot buy anything all right even in the vedic times there was this system of giving gold and then accepting things and then on the basis of that people used to have transactions so depending on the position of mercury because see mercury is also intelligence all right it also shows your grasping power i've already made a video on difference between jupiter and mercury in my uh, astrology secrets series if you have not watched it then go and watch it you will understand better what is mercury and what's the difference between mercury and jupiter here all right so now mercury signifies all of these but we have to understand that mercury signifies money first of all and why does it signify intelligence because the more you're intelligent the more you can uh, earn money well that's not the case always sometimes foolish people can also earn money foolish i don't mean uh, who don't have intelligence but who are not as intelligent as others but in general if you are more intelligent then you can get a better job or you can if you have more ideas you can open a business and you can make it run more faster all right you can have more profit so you can hoard assets basically you can hoard wealth all right you can hoard things basically these millionaires billionaires what's the difference between them and other people they have more things to hold on to they can claim authority over more things in this planet right so mercury's position in the chart will tell us how much wealth we will be holding yes that is very true if mercury is well placed especially if it is in kendra or it is in its own sign gemini or it is in its exaltation between 0 to 15 degrees of virgo or it is in multricon between 15 to 20 degrees of virgo or if in, even if it is in own sign in Virgo 20 to 30 degrees or the entire sign of Gemini, then also Mercury is considered to be extremely strong. And especially Mercury is one such planet which 
and that's very good in houses like the sixth house and the eighth house yeah that's very surprising because mercury is having the trait of being jealous because mercury has uh, mercury is the child actually yes he's the prince and when mercury is placed in the sixth house that means your enemies will be jealous of you which means you are an exceptional person only then your enemies will be jealous right nobody will be jealous of you if you are just another ordinary person so mercury in the sixth means that you have exceptional uh, traits exceptional uh, qualities which they don't have and mercury in the eighth house is also fabulous because <coughs> eighth house is the second from the seventh house so it's the money of other people my money is second house the money of my spouse is eighth house and any other people all right eighth house is very important for business also because it, business is seventh house but the money of the people investors etc all these are in the eighth house so when you have mercury well placed in the eighth house or even it's in a reasonable good dignity then you will see that all the other people are coming and opening their pockets in front of you <laughs> to gain money from other people becomes very easy i like to gain money from inheritance and all all, all different areas um, and mercury is also very powerful in the fifth house all right because it's the house of intelligence and mercury in the third house is very good for communication for journalism media industry and all this all right so mercury tells us how much will we hoard in this life all right how much wealth will we capture will we sustain that's the prithvi tatva earth element in this earth how much rule will you enjoy all right that is what mercury signifies and as we all know it gets exalted in virgo and it gets directional strength in the first house because first house is the house of the head so when mercury is in the first house then the person's capacity to process information and knowledge and try to accumulate things which is mercury is very fast is very strong is very good he can get things done very fast <laughs> mercury in the first house even if mercury is in the fifth house these people are very shrewd and very cunning right and mercury in the 10th house is unanimously perhaps one of the best positions after the first house because 10th house represents the house of your status so whenever mercury is in the 10th house what is seen generally that <coughs> the person has multiple sources of income and from different places the person earns money all right even if mercury is in the 11th house these are very good placements for mercury <coughs> only thing is mercury may not be very great in the 12th house because it's the house of laws all right and if mercury is in the 12th house <coughs> then it might uh, happen that you might have to lose money to gain money do you understand <laughs> that means you have to spend some money and then you get some money all right that that is what mercury shows in the 12th house and mercury in the 7th house is also okay not a very great placement because it is opposite of the directional strength which is the first house <laughs> so mercury in the 7th people are suggested to take decisions only after consulting other people all right otherwise you may make wrong decisions So there you go mercury will tell us how much wealth will you hoard in this life okay and mercury is the only planet which gets exalted in its own house in its own sign which is virgo that is because mercury likes very much to be in virgo because virgo is the sign of critical analysis of making things very detail oriented okay this is here this is there and another meaning of why mercury gets exalted in virgo is we never like to give away money we always want to keep money with ourselves all right so that is why mercury gets exalted in its own own house own sign of course and it is also fabulous in the sign of gemini for communication with dealing with other people making getting things done for marketing etc and the next tatva the last tatva and the most important is akash tatva which is ether now which planet signifies akash tatva it is jupiter itself all right now what is jupiter jupiter uh, b- before jupiter what is akash basically akash is ether that which helps you to expand ether helps you to expand ether's state is it is ever expanding there's only bit so that means jupiter represents 
your on a mundane sense it represents children family and all these things all right on a mundane sense which means that your family can expand always today you have a, a child then you can have another child then you can have 10 children and then uh, your brother can have another 10 children all right then your sister can have another 10 children so the family can keep growing there is no limit or you can bring other people also to your family your friends and your colleagues and all these people and you can say that oh these people are also my family so there is no limit to how big your family can be and that also means if jupiter is well placed in somebody's chart uh, the person has the power the capacity to encompass many people or encompass everybody into their life as a part of their family and especially if it is exalted and it is placed in a very good house like the first house that means you are a cancer ascendant these people i have seen that they say that the entire world is my family yes everybody is my family nobody is my relative everybody is my relative because they like to express that ether element which is what to encompass everything and higher sense jupiter represents spirituality god wisdom divinity and that is also ever expanding so sometimes people ask me the question that how much can we advance spiritually the answer is you, there's no answer to this question <laughs> because the trait of ether is it is ever expanding so you can have unlimited expansion spiritually you can have unlimited potential you can have there's no limit actually to how much perfect you can be spiritually there's no limit to how much scriptural knowledge you can encompass within yourself there's no limit to how much knowledge you can give to others and that is what happens when you get spiritual knowledge because ether also is very broad you see so that that's what happens when you get spiritual knowledge which is jupiter your vision becomes very broad you become very much accommodating because jupiter uh, has the sign of pisces you see it rules pisces which is a very broad and accommodating sign you understand that every person has their flaws their likes their dislikes okay and you don't try to force yourself on others that is why venus gets exalted there that means to maintain a relationship which is venus you need to have the traits of pisces which means you should be very accommodating very very much understanding very mature all right all these things are there in the sign of pisces and sagittarius is the mool trigon sign of jupiter which represents uh, the core spiritual aspects of life all right connecting to the divine divine source so all these things are from the sign of sagittarius the guru the personality your preceptor who gives you divine knowledge also comes under jupiter so when guru gives you knowledge your horizon is broadened earlier case you are like a frog sitting in the well everybody all of us right but when you get spiritual knowledge you come to know okay this this world is not all in all there is there are things beyond this world also then we try to broaden our horizon and we try to think okay what am i doing here why am i here at all should i be here and i am going to die one day is that all uh, was i born to work and uh, get married and ultimately have children and you die one day that's what the world is right but then when you get spiritual knowledge you think no 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 that should not be all there must be something beyond this so then you try to go and inquire well, where god is who god is what am i doing uh, and then you come to scriptures like the bhagavad gita where you come to know that lord krishna says mama ivam sha jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana means living entity is eternally my part and parcel that means we all belong to the supreme personality of god at lord krishna and when we try to make him happy god in general then we attain happiness all right so this is what jupiter tells it is the akash tatva and it is ever expanding and another meaning of this is the guru who is jupiter will always accept the disciple irrespective of their flaws all right this is what i have also seen even in my experience in 2010 uh, when i met so many gurus then i told them that i have this flaw i have that flaw i'm bad in this i'm bad in that uh, then they said no problem whoever you are however you are we are accepting you you can uh, come and practice spirituality along with us there is no rule there's no regulation all right 
but yes in each, e- eventually you have to uh, elevate yourself and that happens very naturally you don't have to work too much on that all right that will naturally happen you will advance yourself naturally so there you go ever encompassing ever expanding no limit to spiritual perfection that is what jupiter represents as akash tattva and family growth expansion in general and divine knowledge broadening of the horizon all right that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with everybody else and if you want a consultation then please go below to my website vedic renaissance and then mail me accordingly okay until next time what should we discuss we will see what to discuss and yes please uh, watch my bhagavad gita series which i have started again all right until next time wish you good luck with the tatvas of planets bye bye see you